Je- maybe. Yeah, here we go. So Shelly Man for Chris, turn one in the past of the turn. So no turn one play there. Jesse's going to have an Overgrown Tomb and a Thought Seize. So Jesse at 16 already. Chris has Fatal Push, Temple Garden, Maelstrom Pulse, Lingering Souls, Liliana of the Veil, Inquisition of Kozilek. What are we taking here? We're probably going to be taking... Uh, Inquisition is my guess. Uh, take away the ability to interact with my hand. The other option I suppose would be Fatal Push? I don't know. Liliana's not playable yet. He needs to find another Black Source. Lingering Souls is not playable. It's also really bad to put in the graveyard for your opponent. It takes away half of the spell, but the other half is still really good. Um... I think I'm just taking Inquisition here. Yeah, just takes away the Inquisition as well. He's got a Grim Flare, which will get pushed, but I don't think he can do much about that. I mean, I, I guess with the way that Chris's hand lines up, yeah, it's awkward no matter what. You take the push, he the Inquisition, he takes the Grim Flare. You take the Inquisition, he gets to push a Grim Flare because he has no other black mana to play. But that's fine. All right, and we're good to go. Chris draws Abrupt Decay. Sure. He will play a tap Temple Garden and pass the turn. So Fatal Push at the ready, of course. Blooming Marsh was the draw for Jesse. He's got his own Fatal Push there, I can see. There's the land. Here is a Scavenging Ooze. This is going to be bait for the Fatal Push. It's going to work as well. Uh, but again, he doesn't know that Chris drew Abrupt Decay. So will Chris find his third land? No, he will not. He'll find a Tarmogoyf, though. We have Instant Sorcery and Creature. That's a 3-4 Goyf. Uh, no fetch land yet, interestingly. There's a fetch land there, though, with the Marsh Flats. Again, Jesse does have in hand uh, his own Fatal Push. So he will be able to get rid of this Goyf and play a Grim Flare if he'd like. Here's the sacrifice. His graveyard right now, he does actually, with the Fatal Push, he'll actually have Delirium turned on as well. Um, he currently has Sorcery, Creature, and Land. Uh, and then again, Fatal Push on Goyf will fulfill Instant. And uh, that'll, be, that'll be four types. So this would be good. Uh, Jesse, a, he's... Gonna not get white mana. Interesting. Okay. He must not have any white cards in hand. Grim Flare and push your goif. Yep. So Goyf down, 4-4 four, four, Grim Flayer now, thanks to the push being added. Chris will untap. Looking for a third land still. Liliana's is an answer. Uh, did you draw another push? I'm not sure. You might have drawn another push there. He just says go. Jesse draws Liliana. That's a good one. There's Liliana. I would have attacked first, I think, but there's the discard. He discards Lingering Souls. Here's the attack. It, is, it was a fatal push, so that's a good draw for Chris. He already had an answer, but uh, now if he'd like, he gets to flashback Lingering Souls, but he drew a Goyf, I think. No, he has, oh, sorry, he brought Edward. Okay, we knew about that already, so. Down goes Liliana. Jesse draws a Goyf, though. And I, if I'm not mistaken, Chris now, the only answer he has to that would be his only Liana. But he needs an untapped black source to deal with that. There's the Goyf. It is currently instant sorcery, land, creature, planeswalker. That's a 5-6 Goyf. Chris, still no land. I think he's another push, though. So, yeah, he's getting the better, the better side of this trade. 
Uh, Jesse is going to turn on his stirring wildwood, it looks like. That's what it looks like he's lining up for here. Yep. This is an attack for eight, but Chris is going to fatal push uh, probably the wildwood here. Take the hit for five. Yep. Take the hit for five and then hope you find a land. You've got enough time to try and find a land that you're not really under that much pressure. He can still take another two hits from the Goyf before he's actually in range of lethal. He also just found his own Goyf, so that's even that's that's fine as well. This prayer texts him from the other Goyf. Goyfs don't get through each other very well unless Jesse finds a high arc. Uh, instead, he found a windswept heath. That's not very good. He also has Maelstrom Pulse. Also not a good answer because it kills his own Goyf. Chris draws, I believe, Tireless Tracker. So still hasn't found his second land, or his third land, rather. Uh, he will flashback Lingering Souls. Jesse on end step is going to fetch. He just wants to find spells. He wants to stop finding lands at this point, basically, if I'm Jesse. Fetches up Temple Garden, sure, just to make sure he has enough white mana for anything he might draw. Lingering Souls would be a, a pretty good draw here. Um, again, Jesse is is aware of both the Maelstrom Pulse and Oleana in Chris's hand. So he knows that Pulse right now isn't great because it'll it'll, it'll just kill his own Goyf as well. Uh, Liliana would be good. He drew a Tarmal Goyf. That's good too. Jesse's hand is Tarmal Goyf and Maelstrom Pulse. He can pulse away the spirits if he wants. I think he's going to, actually. Maybe not. He's thinking. Yep, he'll pulse away the spirits. And he'll play his second Tarmogoyf. I don't know. I think if I'm Chris, I might... De might I might think about firing off a pulse here now, because I am losing a double Goyf. And the pulse is a two for two instead of a two for one. Yeah, this is, this is good as well because Jesse should just block with one Goyf. He shouldn't go for the kill on the Goyf. Chris needs a land actually as well. I forgot about that. Still no land. So Jesse takes five unless he blocked. Yeah, he did block, so... What happened? He must have double blocked it then. Siege Rhino's good. If I'm not mistaken, it's 14, 13, and now it's going to be another 5 coming across. I believe it's 8 to 14 in Jesse's favor now, if I have, if I have my, my numbers correct here. Yeah, again, we're just double checking the size of the Tarmogo if it is in fact a 5 6. Well, Chris found his third land. But it's a Wildwood again. And this doesn't even let him play Liliana still. Uh, he can flashback Lingering Souls. He's just going to scoop it up instead. He wasn't, I don't think he was totally dead, but he was not in a good spot. Uh, so, Jesse takes down game one. It was grindy. That's usually how this matchup goes. Uh, game two will have Chris on the play again. Uh, however, hopefully he'll have untapped mana this time. Now, with that being said, typically in this mirror match, you side out some number of Thoughtseize like effects, uh, whether it be Thoughtseize or Inquisition. They're just not good late game. Uh, they make really bad top decks. This is a one for one matchup where you're basically always trying to just kill off their next threat, you know, make your own threat. Hope it doesn't die. If it does, find another one, kill theirs. Rinse and repeat until someone wins, essentially. Um, and in that sort of that sort of matchup, uh, Thoughtseize Inquisition are terrible top decks. They just do nothing. Um, so yeah, we'll 
You typically see some number of those being taken out here. This guy is going to be sideboarding here still. Probably pretty similar sideboards. It's a pretty fine-tuned deck at this point. A few flex spots here and there, but for the most part, it's pretty well set. So post bore, you're looking for a turn one high arc. That's uh, that's the best draw. So just finishing up shuffling here. Uh, Jesse just finished up his sideboarding. All right, looking at their opening sevens here. Liliana and Jesse's hand, I can see. Windswept Teeth, Goyf. Actually, both Liliana's in his hand there. Uh, Chris is going to mulligan. Jesse looks to have kept, I, I think his, yeah, he's got Goyf and Scoos. Okay. He's got like Lingering Souls Liliana's in his hand, so this will be interesting. Chris going to look at six here. Hopefully find something that works. He does keep. Scry is down to the bottom. Verdant Catacombs in a pass of the turn. Jesse will untap and draw. He's going to pick up. I uh, play Windswept Teeth. Chris going to look here. Probably a fetch on end step. Unless he's looking for lands. He did scry to the bottom. But yeah, he does fetch away the catacombs down to 19 now. Gets a godless shrine here for himself. Let's see where he goes here with his turn two. Um... Grim Flare, probably the best two drop. Uh, if they're playing Dark Confidence, those are also very good here. Goyf, it's a Goyf, it's a 1 2, so it's not great. It's not super exciting, obviously, but Chris will untap and draw. He drew a Temple Garden, it looks like, so if he was missing a land, he is no longer. I don't think he was, though. Uh, Blueing Marsh is the land, and he passes back again. So Jesse, down to 19 as well. Overgrown tomb for him. And same basic place for Jesse here. He's going to be looking either for something like our confidant if he plays it. 
uh, Grim Flare, Goyf even, anything like that is good. Uh, I know that he has in hand double Liliana. Uh, he has one Liliana, the last hope, and one of the Veil. Uh, he does have a second Black Source. He has Godless Shrine in his hand. Uh, this is going to be a Tarmogoyf, it looks like. Uh, maybe not. Scavenging Ooze, also an option for Jesse. And that's where he will go, he decides. So, Scavenging Ooze it is. And we're back to Chris here. So, Chris, uh, nothing to do to the Ooze on the end step there either. He just untaps. Or goes to his turn, at least. Uh, here's a Goyf. It's a 1-2, so that is not great right now. Uh, only land in the graveyard currently. Chris does have a land to play. Uh, might just be debating. He's going to play the Blooming Marsh. He might have like a Path to Exile. He debated there for a little bit. But he wants the untapped Mana Source, I guess. Uh, Jesse plays out uh, Godless Shrine untapped. Liliana will come down of the Veil. Get rid of the Tarmogoyf with her Edict Effect and attack for two. So Chris now at 17 as well. Jesse is... Quite ahead now, though, thanks to Liliana and Scavenging Ooze in play. Uh, here's a Grim Flare. And Temple Garden untapped for Chris. I, I really feel like he probably has like a Path to Exile or something like that here. Uh, leaving it untapped like that, you know, signifies that you need the mana for something. And he's looking like on the upkeep, which means that it's... It just says go, okay. Uh, Jesse draws the Blooming Marsh. Uh, Nihil Spellbomb is very good in this mirror match as well. Uh, a one-sided Graveyard Wipe is nice uh, to control opposing Grim players. The Goyf is not as important because the Goyf also counts your opponent's graveyard, but it is good at controlling a Grim player like Chris has right now. Uh, Liliana, no choice but to go up here if he wants to use it. I don't see why you wouldn't. Yep. I think he has his own Lingering Souls to discard, which is always good. Chris is thinking here, so he likely doesn't have his own souls. Yeah, he discards Gavany Township. Jesse discards Lingering Souls. Definitely a better exchange for one side than the other there. Uh, Delirium Count doesn't go anywhere because Chris already had land in his graveyard. Currently has land and creature. Again, it feels like he's got a path to exile here, the way he's been playing this turn. Uh, playing the last couple turns, in fact. Uh, yeah, this is nice as well, actually. Liliana get to stay and play together now, which is pretty good. Uh, with the new change to the Planeswalker rule, they're no longer unique. They are now legendary permanents. So Liliana's have different names. They get to stay and play together. Uh, this Grim Flare now is 0-1. That's pretty huge. So another attack for two will bring Chris to 13. This Grim Flare is not doing much. Um, yeah, this is this is a good this is a really good spot for Jesse here. He has abrupt decay. He's gonna go ahead and abrupt decay Liliana the last hope. Uh, this does bring the flare count to three out of four. Scavenging is of his own, okay. So dueling oozes. And this is an attack for zero. Yep. That's what that was. Mm -hmm. He's going to go ahead right away and eat the lingering souls. That is definitely the correct play. You don't want to give your opponent any chance to cast that if you can avoid it. Leaves the white source open. Could just be bluffing out a path to exile here. Jesse draws a second copy of Nihil Spellbomb. Again, that'll be good to keep the flare in check. Uh, Liliana can strip the last card from Chris's hand. Now, if it is a path to exile, uh, that will get taken away, of course. Or that will get fired off in response, rather. But let's see. Jesse with another Tarmogoyf in hand as well. Uh, Planeswalker, Land, Instant, and Creature are currently in the graveyard. I mean, I think you start by ticking up Liliana and seeing what happens, right? Um, if Chris fires off Path in response, you get to play a Goyf. 
Uh, and a spell bomb. Even with Path to Exile, Chris wouldn't have uh, Delirium online. You can discard your second spell bomb. He's actually going to cash it in here for an edict instead. So Chris has to decide now what's more important here. Uh, his Grim Flare or his Scavenging Ooze. He decides that Grim Flare is the more important one. Jesse's probably very happy about that. Here's a Tarmogoyf. We've got, again, Planeswalker, Instant, Land, Creature. So that's four. There's Nihil's Spell Bomb. With a black mana still to activate, of course. So... Yeah, you attack here for sure. You have green mana available. Definitely attack here. If Chris blocks, you get to eat a creature in response and just grow your own flare. Or grow your own ooze, rather, I should say. He's going to eat the scavenging ooze. He'll gain a life. Chris will take three here, fall to ten. Yep. Yeah, Chris Chris needs something here. Now, if he doesn't have a path to exile, Jesse has left himself in an awkward spot here. He's reaching for that mana. But no, he does not have it. Yeah, I think at this point, Jesse is pretty aware that Chris would have to draw a path to exile. Uh, he's not sitting on it at this point because he would have fired it off by now on that goif, if nothing else. Jesse can actually crack his own spell bomb and still have a 3-4 goif, which is bigger than the flare. So I, I think that... I think Chris did draw a path. Because again, I, I feel like... I, I feel like it just wouldn't make sense that he held it on the end step there. When Jesse's tapped out. It's not like he can respond with anything, so... Uh, he's going to mill all three here, however... Jesse does fall to 16 after the attack from the Flare. Jesse's still in a good spot, however. Now, Chris does have one card in hand. Uh, it is another Grim Flare. That's that's pretty big, though. Uh, I think he put his own Planeswalker in the yard, so that should give him 4-4 four, four Flares. This would be a good time to have Maelstrom Pulse if you're Jesse. We know he does, and we know he has Tracker and Second Spell Bomb in hand, but... Flare would be real, or uh, Maelstrom Pulse would be real good off the top here. Goyf's not a bad consolation prize. You can play Goyf and crack Spell Bomb that leaves you with a 3 4 Tarmogoyf. Yeah, that seems great. I, I just play Goyf and leave up Spell Bomb. I don't even bother attacking, I don't think. I just let him. Have double 4-4 four, four flares, which won't matter because my spell bomb. Sure, I mean, an attack is okay as well, I guess. I don't know. I just, I don't want to give Chris an opportunity to... Um, to get a Grim Flare trigger if I don't have to. Uh, he eats another creature. He goes to a 4-power Scavenging Ooze. Chris falls to six. Jesse up to 17 now. It's going to play second spell bomb here. And then I'm going to assume Tarmogoyf. So the only unique cards right now in Chris's graveyard are instant. Yeah, I don't think there's any creatures in the graveyard right now at this point. So um, yeah, Chris can't attack here. If he attacks, he just has a flare eaten by a Tarmogoyf. I mean, you can, but it doesn't seem good. Done on the crack back then as well. Yeah, Chris actually can't attack here. He has to just say go. I think he's dead. Jesse can just take this and fall to nine. And he wins. 
Unless we have life totals wrong, I think Jesse just wins next turn. Chris has no blockers. He can't draw cards. There's no lingering souls in his graveyard as far as I know. I think he's just dead. Jesse's checking the power of the Goyf and what happens if he sacrifices the spell bomb. Spell bomb in the graveyard would still give him three types in his graveyard alone, which uh, lets the Goyf still beat a Grim Flare because the Flare will go back to a 2 2 for sure. Um, yeah, I just. I, I don't. Chris just couldn't attack there, right? Like, he's just dead now. A lot of thought going in here. I'm not sure why. Maybe we have our life totals wrong here, potentially. Yeah. Jesse just takes this and falls to nine, right? Like, he doesn't care. doesn't matter what you put on top of your library. You just, you just, you're dead this turn. Oh, there was... Oh, I guess... Yeah, I guess he got to put... A lingering souls into the graveyard this way. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, I, f I forgot about that. He did, in fact, catch a lingering souls in the graveyard. There wouldn't, I mean, unless it was off the first Grim Flare trigger, there would not have been an opportunity for Jesse to actually get that lingering souls out of the graveyard with a Nihil spell bomb. I didn't see where he actually got it. So again, if it was off the first flayer, then yes. But at the same time, Chris can just juggle that. Actually, it doesn't matter though, because you can still go... No, it doesn't... No, you shouldn't... Yeah, I don't know. It depends. Because you can just juggle... I mean, it looks like it's game over. Jesse does win into...